Welcome, this is Dr. Amanda Rackinson Zapq, and in this tutorial we are going to briefly discuss the partial correlation. More specifically in this tutorial, we are going to overview the different types of correlation analyses. We're going to talk about the definition for a partial correlation, look at examples of when a partial correlation is used, and how to report APA results for a partial correlation. When discussing correlations, it's important to recognize that there are three simple correlation analyses. The zero-order correlation, and this is the relationship between two variables while ignoring the influence of other variables. The partial correlation, which is the focus of this tutorial, and this is the relationship between two variables after removing the overlap of a third, fourth, or fifth variable completely from both variables. And finally, a part co or semi-partial correlation, which examines the relationship between two variables after removing a third variable influence from just one of those variables. As I said, in this tutorial, we are going to briefly focus on the partial correlation. More detailed information about the zero-order correlation and correlation analyses can be found in the bivariate zero-order correlation tutorial. And it's recommended that prior to viewing this tutorial, that you view the one on bivariate zero-order correlation. When a researcher wants to examine the relationship or so association between the scores of two variables while controlling for a third, fourth, or fifth variable, the researcher would conduct a partial correlation. Now, this technique is sometimes commonly used for modeling of small models, such as three to five variables. If you are using over th um, three to five variables, then often the best choice is to start examining a multivariate correlation analysis, such as a multiple regression or multiple correlation analysis. But uh, again, a bivariate correlation is used when a researcher wants to know about the relationship between variables one and two while controlling for variables three, four, or five. Thus, for a partial correlation, the researcher needs to have two variables that are continuous, or at least one continuous variable and one dichotomous variable, and one to three antecedent or intervening variables, that is the variables that the researcher wants to control for. So now let's look at an example of when a researcher may use a partial correlation analysis. If you remember back to the bivariate zero order correlation tutorial, in the example provided, the researcher used a Pearson's product moment correlation to examine the strength and direction of a relationship between two quantitative variables, sense of community and course grades. Now, in a partial correlation, the researcher is interested in the same thing, however, only after removing the influence of a third variable, a control variable, from the relationship by holding its influence constant across the two variables. So perhaps in our research example, the researcher finds literature that says, suggests that gender can significantly influence online students' community as well as um, course points in education courses. So therefore, he thinks that or he knows that he needs to control for gender and he poses the question, is there a statistically significant relationship between online students' sense of community scores and their course grades while controlling for gender? Again, since he's interested in the relationship between two variables while removing the influence of the third, in this case gender, a partial correlation is the most appropriate analysis. You'll notice here that um, in alignment with the research question, there are two null hypotheses listed. And this, be this is because in a partial correlation analysis, you not only report the partial correlation results, you also report the zero order correlation results because what you do is you look at these two analyses and you compare them to determine the influence of the covariate or intervening variable. So really you're going to discuss both of these null hypotheses. While we're discussing results and um, running the analysis, I want to make another note here that I'm not going to discuss in depth. Um, with a partial correlation, you still need to meet all the usual assumptions that you would for a Pearson's R. So linearity, normality, homodisticity, etc. So those become uh, very important. 
to um, to look at and discuss also. So since we're headed in that direction, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, reporting a partial correlation analysis um, in APA style. Here we see a list of the items that need to be reported uh, for a partial correlation analysis when an APA style result section is written. You need to discuss and report assumption testing, descriptives, numbers, the number of participants, the degrees of freedom, the significance level for both the zero order correlation as well as the partial correlation. And I'll note here, again, if there's no significance, then you state that there's no statistically significant relationship and then you don't need to go on to report um, to discuss the effect size. You also then discuss the effect size, in this case Pearson's R, as well as um, the power of both analyses, both the zero order as well as the partial correlation. And here you see how these items that we just looked at are used to communicate um, results in APA style. Again, just like with the zero order bivariate correlation that we discussed in the other tutorial, you state the re, um, statistical results, but again, I'm going to note here you state the statistical results for the partial correlation and also for the zero order correlation. So you have two R values and two significance levels. Here you'll note first the partial correlation and then you'll note the zero order correlation. You then discuss these results in sentence form. Here um, you can see a partial correlation was used to evaluate the null hypothesis that there's no statistically significant relationship between students' sense of community and total course points after controlling for the effect of gender. Uh, the, and what you'll see is, is that there was a moderately strong positive partial correlation because the um, alpha level was 0 0.04, which is less than 0 0.05, and the significance level was, or sorry, the effect size was 0.48, indicating that it was a moderate relationship headed toward a rather strong relationship. Then the results for the zero order correlation are reported here. Um, since the significance level is, point, is less than 0.05 at a 0 0.02, we can state that there was a statistically significant relationship between the two variables and that um, since R, Pearson's R was 0.51, that that relationship was strong. Now, if we look at the zero order correlation coefficient and then the partial correlation coefficient, what we notice is that they're rather close to one another. So really what this indicates is that controlling for gender had very little effect on the strength of the relationship between the two variables. So you're looking at, you're comparing the two the two correlation analyses. So you report them both and then you talk about them in relation to one another. Finally, you state, you make a decision about the null hypotheses. Um, and here what we can say is that the partial order correlation as well as the zero order correlation hypotheses uh, can be rejected because the significance levels for both analyses or both procedures is less than 0.05. This concludes our tutorial on the partial correlation. You should at this point be able to understand the difference between simple linear correlations, define the partial correlation, discuss examples or research examples of when the partial correlation is appropriate, and finally be able to identify how to report a partial correlation analysis in APA style.